Alright, so welcome back to the Punky Rooster Show. Yay! Clapping! So, um, there's actually a good amount to talk about today. So, but before I get too deep into it, I did want to, um, thank everyone for, I guess, humoring me last week when I, uh, had those, tried to, during this live show, record those two segments for other videos. You might have seen the other videos posted. It was the composting of the dog, dog poop in the worm bin. And also, um, you know, just, you know, about the, the mushroom, the whole process of, of soaking the grains versus boiling them. And um, I've decided I'm not going to do that. Like, again, I thank you for humoring me. And it was an interesting experiment to try to, re like, record those segments while I'm doing the live show. But the they're just two different entities. Like, I think this format, in terms of the live stream, works best when you when i'm just giving general updates i'm here to like hang out i'm here to chat you know it's 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 a little bit more comfy it's a little bit more free form trying to like shoehorn in this these segments that are a little bit more organized really just does it does a disservice to both so it prevents me from really engaging and being live because i'm like trying to focus and think about like these specific things i'm trying to say but at the same time i can't really focus on those topics because i, I know i'm live and i kind of want to like interact and be all like woo and a little bit more casual as i sit here and drink my coffee so the two things just don't mesh very well um so i won't be doing that in the future uh, I will use this format as in like, you know, the picture behind me and me on the camera with the green screen for, um, I will be using that to, to record, uh, other specific videos. Cause there's a lot of topics I would like to go over, um, and not necessarily things that I'm actively working on right now. Cause I realize since I'm mostly just using pictures, I can create diagrams of things. I can get photos off the internet. Um, if I am working on something, of course, use my actual photos or videos, but, um, you know, I'd like to talk about some topics that I'm not specifically doing right now. And because it's the winter, that's probably be really handy. Um, any plans that I have for the future, except like hypothetical stuff or just educational videos. But again, recording those separately, using this format, but recording those separately. So I don't, I don't taint the, um, the live stream and kind of like the live update and the hangout sesh, um, with specific topics where I have to like give a um give like a little speech or something i don't know I, I like it to be a little bit more unplanned and freeformed for these live streams so that is where we are so again thank you for humoring me but we're gonna keep things pretty cash pretty cash on these these uh sunday weekly updates um where i can just babble and be myself so um the first picture we have here is one of the, the little experiments I have going on behind me and my, um, on a wire rack, I've turned into a, like a mini greenhouse indoors in this back freezing back, back room that I re also record in. Uh, this is, um, this is the actually cuttings that I took from, uh, the hybrid poplar and the hybrid willow plants that I just basically just grew and put out, um, in their, their, their final homes kind of in the back part of the property, kind of near the hazelnuts, but on the other side of the chicken fence. I should have taken a picture of that, I'm realizing. But um, most of those plants, I will admit, got coffee, Kahlua, and goji berries. Oh, well, there we go. Sounds good to me. Um, so, you know, those... Those trees I just planted out there, the willows got attacked by deer. But when I, when we're installing, one of the big projects for next year is installing a fence along our, the border of our property that I'll probably be constructing on the opposite side of those trees. Or if need be, I'll end up moving those trees back. Um, since they're kind of on the other side of the chicken fence, um, I got to figure out exactly where our property ends in that regard. So, so we'll have to figure that out. But in any case, um, the, the willow plants got kind of ravaged by the deer and you know they'll spring back because what i like about these two plants and why they're the only non-fruit or nut trees that i have growing on my my uh, property is because they are the two fastest growing hard wood trees now neither of them are particularly hard but if i want especially the willow but if I want to be able to have um, just wood available for whatever reason, like we have a small fire pit. This isn't like my, my old house in the middle of nowhere where I was like 
I could heat with wood because we had a fireplace in like every room. You know, it isn't... Wow, the color looks amazing. Um, it isn't quite that situation, um, unfortunately, but, uh, you know, I might need it for something. Who knows? You know, and it's also something I want to experiment with, polarding the trees and other such processes, just for my own entertainment. Um, also, they might really make really good fast-growing bonsai. So, um, I was concerned about maybe losing them over the winter, and I want to keep those genetics alive. So I took cuttings for both plants, kind of hastily stuck them in this, this old pot with... Um, just coconut coir. I, of course, dusted the ends. I accidentally dusted the top of the one in the middle, you can see. With the rooting hormones, stuck them in. You know, I've talked about this in the past. Most of them have sprouted or look like they're about to with the um, buds starting to, to swell up. But um, right now, I can't tell which is which, to be, quite, <laughs> to be quite honest. I believe the thicker ones are the willow, and the thinner ones are the, uh, the poplar. But I'm not entirely sure, so it may take a while of growth before I really figure that out. And if, but I know there's some of each in there, so hopefully they all sprout and then I'll, I'll feel secure in having both. But um, I was excited that this worked out because I wasn't really sure, because the trees had already gone dormant. I just lopped off whatever thick branches I could that hadn't been destroyed by deer and put them in. I had a feeling they would they would do okay, but you never know. You get nervous about these sorts of things. So I'm going to wait till these, these grow a little bit bigger and better before I attempt to, um, to repot them or even separate them. You know, I'm just going to let them do their thing. I don't want to push it. I don't want to do it too soon. Kind of like I did with that mulberry air layering. Um, so no. So this is, this is, uh, another shot of one of the little experiments. These were various peppers and, and herbs that I started by seed. And honestly, the germination rate and everything was pretty terrible. Like, I have some peppers coming up. A sage came up and did pretty good. I have, like, one oregano that's doing okay. It might be a couple. But not really fantastic. And a lot of things just didn't sprout. So I'm not really sure. It may just be too cold in here. These are on a, a heat a heat mat. Um, I actually have a couple heat mats going on. But it's, um, they didn't do great. And I'm not really sure what it is. Maybe it's the potting soil. Maybe I should have just used coconut coir. I've... I specifically bought this potting soil mix from the store just because I was like, oh, I should have some potting soil, uh, excuse me, not potting soil, uh, seed starting mix. But I don't really like it. It just, some of it like really molded and just tons of algae. And I, I don't know, it just, it did not seem to do well. It also did not seem to suck up water really well, which was really annoying. So I don't think I'll be using that in the future. And it may salvage what I can out of this, but I'll probably restart some again. I wish I had saved my pepper plants from this growing season. I'm so, I regret not doing that. Um, but I'll probably be doing it next year. Actually, I had a really good idea because um, right now I have those four rows of the 20 gallon premium nursery pots. And I need nine more to complete the four rows so they'll all be equal for a total of 72 20 gallon pots to grow in. Uh, the outside rows are, you know, my, my gentle perennials, um, the strawberry plants, the asparagus plants the rhubarb, things of that nature. Uh, oh, actually, the, the um, horseradish too, which I'm really excited about because actually somebody in my town posted on the town message board and was like, hey, anyone got some horseradish root? And I was like, yes, I do. So I was able to give some of that away, which I thought was really cool. I love giving to my neighbors whenever possible. Um, it's part of my mission a statement, I guess you would say. So um, in the inside ones, I'm probably going to do a three sisters. Then I decided that I have the, all these 10 gallon squat pots that I've been, I was using previously getting the 20 gallon. Um, and obviously I can't grow tons of stuff in the, the 10 gallon pots, but I thought what would be really cool is taking those 10 gallon pots and actually stacking them sort of where four, if you can picture it, I should have got a diagram, but I just thought to talk about this. Take four of those 20 gallon pots, put them together where they meet in the middle, put a t stack of 10 gallon pots. So it'll be like a, a little, um, uh, it'd be like a vertical placement if you can picture that like stuff growing around uh, and then up above in a raised 10 gallon pot anyway i'll definitely show pictures i'm probably going to go out there and set up an experiment maybe actually after i do this video and maybe i'll show it to you next week but um doing this like tiered effect with growing most of my 10 gallon squat pots are actually out in the greenhouse growing oh that was good timing they're actually lined up picture perfect segue in the in my greenhouse within a greenhouse so this is the pots that i've planted uh, in the greenhouse that's only heated by the Hidden Harvest grow lights. And they're doing fantastic. Like, it was hard getting a picture that really captured it. Again, I have uh, 
13 of these pots out there um, alternating between carrots and snow peas. And now that I've, so those snow peas that I started indoors, brought them outside, they look great. Um, little set behind due to me trying to plant out in seed, plant those uh, via seed and getting devastated by some squirrel that decided to get into the greenhouse. Now, uh, this is growing pretty good. I'm realizing that I'll probably, whatever extra pots I do have, I'll probably leave in this setup and continue to grow things maybe in the setup during the summer, uh, maybe. Um, but I should start, anyway, the, I should start these pots in this setup a little bit earlier because I'm realizing that by the end of the, these probably won't be ready by, well, maybe towards the end of winter, but it's not like I'm gonna have like this great harvest throughout winter because the peas are still kind of, kind of small and the, the carrots obviously need a lot more time. You know, they look, they look fantastic. Um, I even tried to sparsely plant carrots. So I'm terrible at planting really everything by seed, but specifically carrots. Like I've had horrible luck with carrots and probably it's because of the fact that I'm just terrible at, um, putting them out. Like this is my sparse. Like I just sprinkled a couple seeds here and there and look what happened there. I mean, they're not horribly crowded. I mean, you can see that there's a good amount of space between them, but so this is better than I normally do, but I'm still, it's probably too much. I don't know. Carrots are one of those things I haven't quite mastered yet. Um, I just thought of, you know, root vegetables aside from potatoes. Honestly, I don't have the best luck with, but that's okay. You grow what you can grow. Usually a pepper person. Okay, so let's talk about the chickens since this is the next photo. Um, so these are the four adopted hens that, um, they're older, they're still doing great. Um, but, uh, their time is coming to an end in terms of being productive egg layers. They weren't the greatest. I mean, they weren't as old as I thought, but they're, they're already starting to slack off. Um, but I don't want to get rid of them. I'm not going to kill them or anything like that. But, um, I've been thinking of chicken plans for next year and I have this, sorry for my <laughs> finger being in the photo, but this looks like, like a vagrant shanty town. This coop. This is the coop that I got off of Amazon because I needed something really quick. I extended it in two different directions. I built on extension um, um, additions, I guess you'd say. Hey, heirloom permaculture, how you doing? Thanks for joining us today. So, so I built onto this many ways I can. I added the automatic door um, with the linear actuator. I've done so much stuff to this, and the chickens do okay, but they don't really like it truthfully, it seems. Um, I find them frequently perched on the top of the coop. So I've been thinking about, you know, maybe next year, go ahead and just buying a much better coop um, or building one. But since I'm gonna have a lot of other building projects come this spring, I'm probably just gonna fork out the cash, um, start saving up now and actually get them um, a coop. And I'm considering investing in one of those egg glues because I'm doing really good with the plastic insulated beehives that I'm thinking maybe I should do a plastic insulated coop. Um, and I could try to move the hens. Excuse me one second. <sighs> uh, I really need a cough button. So I could, um, you know, I could try to move the old head because I'm also considering getting four new chicks um, to just bump up egg production. Um, these will be black sex links if I can get those or some kind of sex leaks, red if need be, red stars. And um, just so I, cause I can't have roosters here. So they, I've got to guarantee that the chicks are, are, are hens. Cause I just don't want to go through the trouble. And I'm not really bound to any particular breed these days. I really like the barred rocks. They're a great chicken, but you know, I'll take what I can get. Um, I don't want to deal with having to rehome roosters. It's just such a disaster and usually very heartbreaking. Um, so there's a possibility of keeping the old ladies in this coop and just getting the new chickens, the new chicks used to the new coop. But the coop I'm looking at can house 10 chickens. So, I mean, that's probably an overestimate, but I think eight would be pretty fine. So I could just move them all into the big coop. Or uh, what I was considering is if I keep the old ladies attached to this older coop, I can just take this coop because I'm not gonna have use for it if I buy a new coop. Thinking about taking it out of the primary chicken run and put it out into my yard. It keeps the older chickens there. So they basically will become free rangers. 
Um, they won't really serve so great as egg layers anymore, but maybe they become, become sort of permanent free rangers. And uh, that goes hand in hand with us fencing in our entire property next year. So they'll essentially get to live in our entire property, which is very small because, again, we're back in the suburbs. But they can go, they can peck around in the garden, around stuff. Um, hopefully not destroy my garden, which chickens tend to do. Um, but just let them roam around more, maybe. Uh, but that might not be a good idea. And I think it's also going to depend on how fast we get that fence up. So we'll see how it goes. But um, the plans for next year is probably buying a better coop. I don't know what I'll do with this coop if I don't end up turning it into like the retirement home for the, the, the old ladies. But we'll see how it goes. But I definitely want to try to get a better coop. Probably shouldn't have even wasted the money on this, but again, it was it was time sensitive because I had the I was adopting those chickens. They were available then. It just it's just the way it worked out. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty, especially with the blue tarps. It looks like something out of the side of the highway. Um, so the bees. Speaking of their plastic insulated hives, I'm not sure how they're doing. Um, they're very much deep into chill mode, um, even though our snow melted away with some warm rain and by warm I mean about 40 degrees Fahrenheit so it's a little bit above freezing but um we're back into very cold temperatures and the bees are pretty much indoors um I picked up the hoods uh, excuse me I picked up the uh the covers and took a peek in uh the blue hive on your on the right there that is the the rebel hive and I didn't see any bees in the top box when I just peeked under the cover now that doesn't necessarily mean anything because I've noticed that these tend to, be, for some reason, this hive likes to to hang out in the, the lower box. So they may just be down there. I tapped on the side to see if I could hear them buzzing, and I did not. Hey, Flybird Go, thanks for joining us. And the CMT hive, the green one, I could see them. They looked like a, it looked like a small ball, but they were there at the top of the hive. Chickies will nom your garden. I had free range hens and had to make a fenced in and cover run for my protect my Yeah, so that that is something I'm yeah, I'm concerned about. That's why I probably I might not do the free range. Because again, they also just like poop all over everything. I don't necessarily I like to keep their laying them out in free range in the backyard every once in a while is fine. But yes, I'm concerned I am concerned about the garden monkey. So thank you for bringing that up. That is definitely a concern of mine. Because um my kids had I took one of my 20 gallon pots. I put it in the backyard where the chickens could access it and let the kids grow their own little garden. Now they had fun planting it, but they mostly forgot about it. Didn't pay much attention to it, but, but the chickens let out, destroy, just ate everything in that pot. They jumped up into the pot. They basically ate everything. It only did, when that happened, did my kids pay any attention to the plants. Like I was, I was watering them. You know, I was going to let the plants die from like, you no know, watering to like teach the kids a lesson. But I was like, no, 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 it's probably, they're very young still. So it's like, it's probably better just to keep it going so they can experience a garden. But they didn't have much interest. But the, the second those chickens went in there and ate everything, then they noticed. And of course they were all upset, all angry at the chicken. So you make a great point that, yeah, it's best to, it's a great idea in our heads, but uh, the, you really, yeah. So the, that goes for most gardening and homesteading things. So I see a lot of videos about let your chickens weed your garden and all this kind of crap. And I'm like, oh my God, it's such clickbait. It's just not real. So much of stuff you see on YouTube videos is just, it's not real. It doesn't really work. And it just drives me up a wall immensely. That's why I'm here. I've always been the kind of the, the, the cold water, um, the raining on people's parade. I almost said something else. All right, so let's talk about some other stuff. So this is the other project going on back there. Um, these are all relatively small, itty bitty little blackberry plants that I got from Starks Brothers, as you can see the tag. I got a few different varieties, including the snowbank, which is the white blackberry, which I was excited about. Those unfortunately are the plants that are doing the saddest. These plants are doing okay, but they're not thriving. They arrived to me in not great condition, I will admit. Um, Starks is not, I mean, most places have not been great during the pandemic, I will admit. So it's like, I got to give them some whatever, but Starks has been disappointing me quite a bit as of late, but I decided to give them again because these were on massive sale. Probably it was like a pandemic sale. Um, but they didn't arrive to me very great, great condition. They did start re-sprouting, like all the leaves like fell off. Um, they started re-sprouting, uh, but then I noticed part of the reason why the, the leaves are falling off probably is they were infested with spider mites. So, and I was 
very casual about the infection, infestation, I should say. And I, I, I did the kind of standard beginner, like basic stuff. Like I removed whatever leaves were still on there, infected leaves. You know, I kind of wiped them down. I was spraying them with a, a dilute spray of alcohol, rubbing alcohol. But the, it didn't. It didn't do the right work, and I should have been more aggressive, especially since these plants are indoors. We don't have ladybugs in this house like we did at the old house. Our old house in the middle of nowhere would get infested with ladybugs every winter, and I loved it. Because <laughs> I would, any time I found them anywhere in the house, I would capture them and put them in the room I dedicated. Because the house is so big, I dedicated an entire large room to gardening indoors, which is pretty cool. Um... But I, you know, I'd throw them in there and they're great for getting rid of spider mites. But, uh, so this is going to take a little bit more work. Like I, I took a, I immediately, once I realized that the, the, inf the infestation had spread to a, um, a critical level and I was risking losing these plants, like the, the snow bank, unfortunately, the one variety I was like really excited about having got hit the worst and they have no leaves again after rebounding. I'm sure they'll rebound again. But I took all these plants and I took put them in my um, uh, kitchen sink. Again, it's freezing outside. All our outside faucets and hoses are all picked up for the winter. So I threw this whole tray down in my kitchen sink and I just sprayed the heck out of the plants. Now that's not going to get rid of them, but it'll help. You know, I'm hoping it will stave them off until I ordered some heavy duty miticide spray. So I'm not messing around. I'm not being friendly. I'm not being organic in this at all. I'm going to doubt, I'm going to soak these things in poison. Um, if you wanted, if you wanted, uh, herbal hippie organic woo, I just not the place. This is not the place for that. I mean, in some ways, yes, but, um, man, I recognize that sometimes you just got to bring out the big guns. It's scorched earth. It's, it's atomic warfare against pests because I, really try hard murdering things in everyday life, but I got no love for pests. Like I even, I even keep little critters, you know, um, which I'll talk about in a second, but, uh, just, no, no, no. So speaking of little critters, I just learned that you can find wild hives by a process called bee lining. It's just following the bees home. Interesting. Interesting. I'd have to check that out. That'd actually be particularly interesting to do now because we have in my community, there's a good number of people who do beehives. So I wonder how many bees I would just be following back to people's houses. <laughs> but I love that idea. That's really cool. Excuse me while I itch my eye. Um, so I'm going to spray these down. The, the miticide should be arriving early next week. It was postponed due to the holidays and of course the COVID nonsense that's going on. Which is fine. No hurry. Um, I'll keep spraying these on a regular basis, literally every single day, to just stave off. Um, yeah. So let's talk about the mushroom spawn. So I called this a failure. I did a dedicated video on it. I did a whole like segment specifically about it last live show. And again, I will not be recording segments meant for separate videos in this live stream anymore. For those who weren't part of the live stream at the beginning when I mentioned this. Um, I'm going to keep this way more casual, way more just kind of like an update, more and more just what's going on. And off the live, I will record um, video specific. So I'm not going to do them during this because it was just weird and awkward. I didn't like it. And I felt it was kind of did a disservice to both kinds of videos. But in any case, so these are the, the, the soaked overnight grains, not the... Um, not the pre parboiled before putting them in the instant pot. Anyway, so these were, I called these a failure because there was a black growth inside a good number of the, what I could see. So any weirdness, I do not use any, any uh, spawn jar that looks, has any amount of weirdness. It's gotta be perfectly pure white puffiness or it does not move on to the next stage. But having said that though, um, instead of, stressing myself out and just getting rid of this otherwise beautiful spawn because i will say that these black spots have not spread um at all they're see they're very localized to the inside of the 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 spots that they're, they're in so i think and i'm throwing this out there i don't i can't ask the mycelium what's going on obviously 
but I'm thinking that there is a little bit of mold there that may be either being held in place or actively fought, being successfully fought against um, by the mycel mycelium. So that that's the that's the thing that um, most people don't realize. You know, these mycelium is a living thing, and it's capable of fighting back and actually um, winning wars against other other mushrooms, other mycelium, other fungus, other mold specifically, uh, bacterial infections, it can fight back against these things if it has enough of a head start and it's healthy enough. The rest of the jar looks very healthy, and I think it might be fighting back against the mold. Now, I still wouldn't use this necessarily in um, any fruiting process that I wanted to keep super clean because there's obviously something nasty in there, but I might let these go a little bit longer and or use them for a dirty mushroom growing method. And what I mean by that is not going crazy um, with, you know, you know, putting the substrate in like a closed bag, um, leaving it really uh, out of the, the confines of um, trying to keep it uh, away from the dirtiness of the world around it. Um, basically creating effectively, I mean, probably covered, but not heavily contained. No, I'm not going to put this in my fruiting chamber, both because of wanting to keep it a little dirty, um, but also because I don't want to um, uh, potentially contaminate my fruiting chamber. Um, but what I was thinking about doing is maybe pasteurizing some straw, putting it in one of my 10 by 20 trays, taking these three jars, just mixing them in, using all three for this one tray. Put I have these nice big humidity domes put it in and then just see if I can grow a tray of mushrooms that, you know, basically treat it like a, um, like just a, a pile of mulch out in the world. I mean, it's going to be somewhat contained. It's going to be somewhat controlled. It's going to be somewhat like taken care of, but, um, but not to the sterile extent that I might, the clean process I might normally follow. And it might be a fun experiment. It may go horribly wrong. The whole thing may get overtaken by this this mold and turns out to be toxic and kills my whole family. Hopefully not. But, um, you know, if it starts turning and looking really bad, then I will dispose of it. But I think it might be kind of a fun experiment to do something a little dirty. Now it's not the best experiment because ideally I would still want to do kind of like this dirty fruiting process with clean spawn, but I don't know. I'm, I, that's why I think I'm going to let these jars go a little bit longer. I want to see if the mycelium is indeed winning the war against this contaminant and then see how it goes. I can also try using it, try to cut out this contaminant too, like the really bad area. So that's one thing I wanna do. So there's a lot of like mini experiments I'll be trying and I'll talk about this in future uh, updates and potentially separate videos because I feel like this is one of those things that probably deserves its own video. Can my mushroom mycelium win against a mold infestation or mold growth? Can it inhibit mold growth? That'd actually make a very good video, I think. So. I mean, that is a strong possibility for the future. So what else have we got here before I talk, start talking about shrimp? All right, so I have these adorable little shrimp. And that is a nerite snail next to it. Um, I'm exploring, along with the bonsai, I'm exploring doing kind of like small aquarium setups that I'll probably be doing separate videos about. I, I mention it every now and again. It's a fun little winter project. Um, and I love, this is like an old fishbowl. Unfortunately, my daughter's fish died finally. It's been alive for a very long time, um, for most of her life. Uh, and it finally passed away. So I've I've taken over the, the fish's bowl and I'm really, I've got this really nice setup going. I have chola wood that you can see there that's supposed to mimic logs. The, 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 the greenery you see is java moss. I'm attaching the java moss to the, the, uh, the chola wood to create kind of like a natural effect. And I'm slowly changing uh, this to be a more beautiful kind of aquarium for these small creatures. The red cherry shrimp, uh, nerite style snails, which are there for, um, for cleaning the aquarium. That's pretty much their entire purpose, scraping algae. Um, but I also want to get these other fish. I posted videos, uh, pictures of them called, they're called least killifish. Now they're, they're not actually killifish. They're related to guppies in there. I think they're the, yeah, they're the smallest um, freshwater aquarium fish and smallest live bearer. So like guppies, they will actually do live bearing of, of, of children. Very easy to keep. Um, I had ordered some, but the 
supplier was a little bit nervous sending him to my area because we, we have had such cold temperatures. So I decided to wait until the spring to really get going, or at least wait, wait, wait like late winter when there might be an opening of warmer weather. Um, but once this gets going, I want to have that in here. And I'm going to be breeding all three of these critters to create these little ecosystems in um, interesting containers. So I have like these large round um, vases that I've talked about in the past that I'll probably be growing these little aquascapes in. So I'll probably be having a lot of videos about aquascaping and this sort of thing, just on a micro, on a small level, like a very microcosm. Um, because I think it's fascinating. I love it. I love little critters. Same thing with like the ant farm, which unfortunately my ant farm, I have no pictures of because I can't find the ants. I know they're still in there because the, 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 the colony is closed, but at the base of these 3D printed um, nests that I have, you can't see what's in the bottom. And the, I haven't seen the queen in a long time. I'm pretty sure she's in there, but they've actually taken in little pebbles and blocked off any way I can see into that bottom section. So they're keeping me from seeing what's going on, which is really a jerk move, these ants. Um, and they had larvae in an upper section of the thing, and they've brought the larvae down. And it possibly is because of lack of humidity. Um, this is my first time using these 3D printed. I bought, I bought them off the internet. They were relatively cheap. Um, I just learned that you can find a wall. Okay. Sometimes it's just metabolites. Yeah, flybird go. So talking about the weird looking pieces. Yeah, so that's... Yeah, so I talk about, you know, them being like nice and like pure white. Sometimes there's mushroom pea, uh, like a collection of of yellow in in jars and in um, mushroom mic bags. It can definitely be. Now black, they might be metabolites. Who knows? Again, maybe the mushroom's doing something to this grain that I've never seen before because I usually cook it more. So who knows? That's why it's like I feel like I still need to use this spawn, and I'm tired of throwing. I do a lot of experiments and. When I'm doing weird stuff, I end up with bad jars. Even when I'm doing good stuff, I occasionally end up with bad jars. My success rate is actually pretty high. So out of all the jars I've ever done, I've probably had... Ooh, that was not good. <laughs> My hair's a mess today. Um, it's uh, Which is why I wear the hat. <laughs> So I don't have to wash my hair. Uh, I brush my hair, not wash my hair. Though I could use a hair washing. Anyway, uh, total tangent there. My grooming habits are not up for debate discussion. Um... <laughs> anyway, I've been so good staying on topic, not veering off into to tangents, and I was so close to doing that, and here I am still kind of on the tangent. Anyway, so I don't know where those ants are currently. I'm pretty sure they're all down, but um, this is my first time using a 3D printed. Uh, it's also the first sheriff successfully caught a fertilized queen to create a proper ant, far uh, ant farm, so we'll see how it goes. And yeah, the metabolites, sorry, I kind of went on another tangent back to my original tangent and then et cetera, et cetera. So it may be true. So I'm going to use that, that, that mushroom spawn, green spawn, just to see what happens. Hi, Punky. Hello again, DG Outdoors. Hope all is well. Saw an old video of yours, but you're uh, about a bow camera mount and really helped. I want to fish. Yeah, I'm looking forward to fishing too. I don't know if I'll be getting into hunting again this year because it's just... There just really isn't a good place for it. There isn't really a, a fantastic place to go fishing either, to be quite honest. But there's more places to go fishing than hunting around where I live now. So, and I don't know if I'm all about the hunting anymore anyway. I don't. I don't know. I mean, I like. Um, I don't know. Mixed feelings for another time. But um, uh, fishing, I'd like to get back into. Um, there's actually, as it turns out, where we live now, it's a little bit of a drive, but not that bad. And it's one of the one of the, the bodies of water. One of the um, ponds, though it's actually quite big. I actually think they call it a reservoir, because I think it's technically a reservoir for Boston. But it's actually a place where they stock, one of the few places that are actively stocked with trout and other such things by the, the State Department of Wildlife, something or other. So um, I look forward to going fishing, trying fishing there. Um, and it has, it's a big place. It's a big reservoir. It's not not the biggest one. The biggest one is the, I believe it's the Wabin, Wabin, Wabin. I don't know how to pronounce it, but that's that's really far away from me. That's out west significantly, but that's a huge. You actually need a separate fishing license just to fish that reservoir. It's such, but they stock it with everything. They just like dump truckloads of fish in there like every year. Um, so, I mean, that's basically what you're paying for with a license. I think that growing duckweed would interest you. It's high protein and B12. It's the fast growing plant in the world. Great nutrition. Yeah, so I actually have older videos about growing duckweed for um, animal feed specifically. Um, it's one of my um, 
it's an older video, but I've experimented with it here and there. Um, it can kind of take over an aquarium situation, and so I'm not really focusing on that for my aquariums. Though that is a popular plant in aquariums too. Um, you know, I've, I've grown it kind of alongside aquaponics. I've grown it um, in uh, when I actually had ducks. I grew it in ponds. Um, kiddie pool ponds, so like the places where the ducks could actually go and to kind of like soak up some of the grossness that they put in those water sources of water. But yeah, so I've experimented with a lot. Um, very fascinating. Um, but I don't, I don't, don't know what I will be doing with it right now. Um, I mean, I could do grow it and feed it to my chickens, but I don't know, maybe it's something I experiment with again in the future. I appreciate the suggestion. So I think that's it um, for topics today. I want to give updates about everything that's going on, uh, the new projects. I, I, you know, it's winter, so the projects are kind of all over the place. There isn't like a specific thing I'm doing. Um, I mean, there's a lot of specific things, I guess, technically, but there isn't like a, the big things like the garden. So I'm going to continue sharing the projects that I can share. I'm really bummed that I didn't get more sprout, sprouts for, I really want to get going with bonsai of various kinds. So I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I feel like I've been talking about bonsai and specifically like bon cheese for so long um, to the point where, you know, I think the it's funny because it's like you couldn't find anything about banshees when I first started doing them or, or being into them and experimenting them. And now it seems like such a popular topic. And I'm like, I'm, I haven't really gotten to the point where I've started doing videos about it. So I feel like I was like ahead of the game and then I like fell way behind in terms of it as a trend. Um, but you know, oh well. C'est la vie. Um, but that's all I have. That's all I have for today. So unless there's any uh, questions or whatnot, I will uh, say adios. Which reminds me, I need to go outside and put warm water, or not, at least not frozen water, in the chicken's watering dish. That's awesome to hear. I hope you get back into fishing. If you live in Boston, I, I used to live in Dover, New Hampshire. My dad still lives there. Oh, no kidding. Oh, that's good. Good to hear. I love New Hampshire. The, my previous property uh, was actually right on the New Hampshire border. Still in Massachusetts, but right on the, uh, the uh, New Hampshire border. And I'm originally from Maine, so um, I'm much much more comfortable in, in rural, more rural states here in the Northeast. Hi, Punky. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Sorry I'm late. Hey, Dean. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm actually just finishing up, so I appreciate it. Merry Christmas to all of you or whatever holiday you may celebrate this time of year. There are many, but I have no idea what the distribution of of, hol of particular beliefs are, whether secularly, whether religiously celebrated or secularly celebrated. Um, pretty secular Christmas here, cultural Christmas here. Um, Christmas was ended up being pretty good for us. We had a really chill Christmas. Um, you know, we didn't visit family because of the pandemic. There are very susceptible people in my family and um, in our circle of friends. So we stayed very, very, very to ourselves. Um, we had a very small Christmas too. Um, we weren't out just, just trying to avoid spending a lot of money these days, um, investing in projects uh, where possible, but also just saving up because, you know, just trying to be safe and sensible. Um, but I had a pretty good Christmas, you know, focused on, you know, my daughter, um, my kids since we're taking care of another kid but um he got lots of presents too but he also got presents from his um his uh birth parents actual parents i should say actual parents because we're not his parents we're just temporary guardians pandemic parents um so anyway yeah so it was a good time so i hope everyone's having a really good season i'm actually on vacation this coming week which i'm really super excited about I cashed in my vacation days and took the classic Christmas to New Year's week off. I'm very, very excited about it. Um, looking forward to the new year. I, I think next year, I'm, I, you know, I've kind of, I've, I'm still sad about losing my uh, old property. Um, I'm particularly interested, sad about, sorry, interested, sad about losing the land that I had on the pond that was near my old property. Losing the house itself ultimately was a good thing because I couldn't keep up with the upkeep of that damn house, both because it was so big, because it was so old, 
that I spent more time working on the house than I did gardening and everything else. <laughs> so, um, I'm fine with that. I'm sad about losing the land. That that hit me more because you know having that fishing and camping area, potentially hunting area, if that's what I wanted to do. Was I was sad to lose it because that's hard to come by in the state. But we needed the money, and you know here we are. But I'm I am I, I've adapted to and accepted kind of where we are. I'm excited about the the the, the projects. You know you know being on this small property as I've talked about before has really inspired me to to explore. Um, tiny things and efficient things and that's actually part of the the bonsai experiment in in bonsaiing pepper plants which is very common but i'm also experimenting with bonsai other things herbs which is also fairly fairly common but i want to see if i can bonsai even more you know can i bonsai a pea plant um, with enough training with enough pruning with enough time and patience can i create a, a small compact perpetual producer of beans or um, garbanzo beans, dry beans, various kinds like black turtle beans, um, string beans, peas, you know, experimenting with a lot of plants to see if I can keep them going, keep them compact, but keep them productive. Because then I could potentially find myself, if I can zero in on, you know, if it can be done, the right pruning methods, the right um, husbandry, I guess, in some sense of the plants, can I find a point where I could have a really, really compact garden? Basically a indoor, you know, a window ledge garden uh, that is very productive, but very small in size. Basically using a lot of what I've, I know and what I've learned about bonsai and um, specialized pruning out in the garden uh, to, to keep things contained. So it's going to be a very exciting time. Like that's part of the reason why I'm so excited about it. You know, it's not just like, oh, I'm going to create some bonsai and it's going to look cool. It's like practicing techniques and seeing how far I can sort of take this. So that's going to be really exciting. But anyway, I think I'm going to call it. I've been rambling for a very long time and I'd like to keep these relatively short. Um, so anyway, I really appreciate you all joining me. Um, as always, I will be here at the normal time next week. It's, it is 12 noon Eastern Standard Time for me. Um... Sometimes, give or take a minute, depending on how uh, any t technical difficulties I run into. Um, I always start tweaking stuff and messing with stuff right before, which is not a good idea. But in any case, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, I'll be doing um, separate dedicated videos offline that will not be part of this live stream. Um, I'm going to keep it pretty, pretty chill. Pretty chill, pretty chatting, and hanging out. So anyway, thank you so much for hanging out. And as always, thank you for joining me. And no, thank you for watching. I forgot my own call sign. Is that what they call it? Thank you for watching and thank you for joining me on this journey.